In the previous unit, we finished creating basin model for Cedar Creek. So the loss methods have all the parameters assigned as you see here on the left. Similarly, the transform method has all the parameters assigned. And then if we click on reach, we have the Muskingum parameter assigned. So the next step now is to input rainfall information to drive this hydrologic model for Cedar Creek. So the rainfall information will come from the Excel file that is provided to you. So there is an Excel file in your data set called Cedar underscore observed. And if you open that file, you will see three columns. So the first column has date which is in the form of year, month, day, hour, minute, seconds. And then you have rainfall in millimeter per hour. And then you have the discharge in meter cube per second. So let's create a rainfall gauge so we can input rainfall information. So before we do that, we want to make sure that we get the time and date right. So the rainfall event that is given to us occurred on 21st of February 2005 and it started at 1 a.m. and it finished at 14 hour or 2 p.m. on the same day. Let's go ahead and create a gauge that will have this rainfall information in millimeters and it has the same time window that is given to us. So I'll go back to HMS. So to create a rainfall gauge, you go to components, time series data manager, and the data type is precipitation gauges, say new. And we will keep the default name gauge one unchanged. So we'll just provide some description, rainfall gauge for Cedar Creek. and say create and then close the time series data manager and then in the watershed explorer now you will see a folder called time series data created and inside that folder you will see precipitation gauges folder and within that precipitation gauges folder you will see gauge one so after you click gauge one you will see that it is in incremental millimeters, which is what we want. The data that is given to us is in millimeter per hour. And the time interval by default is 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and change that to one hour because our rainfall data is in millimeters per hour. Then there are boxes to enter the location information for the gauge. Since we are going to have only one gauge, we are going to assume that the rainfall is falling uniformly throughout the watershed. So we really don't need to provide the information about the gauge location. So the next, we will make sure that the time interval is correct. So remember our rainfall started on 21st of February 2005 and we want to enter the date in the same form. So 21 feb f e b 2005 and the start time is 01 hour 00 minutes so it finished on the same day so again 21 feb 2005 and it finished at 14 hours so the time format in hkms is 24 hour format so don't put 2 p.m. so 14 hour and as soon as we do that it will create an empty table so you will see that the first row you cannot input any information because the rainfall started at 1 a.m. which means the next reading we have is at 2 a.m. after one hour so we have this empty rows what we are going to do is simply copy the information we have in the excel file and paste it so we don't have to manually enter all the numbers. So I'll go to Excel. So at 1 a.m. we have zero, so we will not copy that. We will copy information from 2 a.m. 
until 14 hours so copy and then simply right click and paste and you will see all the values are entered again make sure the units are correct so the unit that is given to us is in millimeters per hour so after we input this so let's go ahead and save the project after we create the gauge make sure that the values are in millimeters per hour one more time and then we also have this rainfall hydrograph which looks like this so once the gauge data looks okay we will create a meteorologic model and link this gauge to the meteorologic model to create the meteorologic model you go to components and then meteorologic model manager and we will create a new meteorologic model and met one so if you want you can input some description meteoro model for cedar creek create and then close and after you do that you will see another folder added to the watershed explorer which is called meteorologic models so met one description unit system is metric because we have millimeters per hour precipitation type is specified hydrograph next this is an important input here that says replace missing about compute so what this means is if the program finds any missing rainfall information it will stop the simulation so instead we will change that to set to default which means even if there are some missing values it will still run the simulation so make sure you change this to set to default the next thing that we are going to do is we will click on basins here and right now include sub basins it is set to no we will change that to s what that will do is it will link the meteorologic model to all the basins and then we will click on specified hydrograph here in the watershed explorer and after you click on specified hydrograph you will see that all the sub basins they are not linked to the gauge so initially by going to met one and basins we ask the program to include all the sub basins in the meteorologic model and now we will link all the sub basins to a rainfall gauge which is gauge one that we created so click here on none and set that to gauge one for all sub basins so after you link all the sub basins to gauge one save your project and now we are ready to run the simulation so in the next unit we will create a control specification file to run the model for the specified time step and duration and then we will run the simulation so for now save your project and this is it for this unit